Hey friends, and welcome in to A Walk Through the Word, Daily Bread with Crystal Fry. I am your host, Crystal Fry, and in today's episode, we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 and 12, to talk about an unlikely choice that changed everything. Thank you for being here with me today, and I pray that you will listen with an open heart to hear the Word of God speaking to you. All right, friends, let's dive in. God's Word is powerful. The missing link is our identity in Christ. When we know who we are and who He created us to be, that is when we can truly walk in freedom. You are never alone. There is hope. And that hope is Jesus Christ. Today we're looking at 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 11 and 12, which read, So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? There is still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he is tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ready with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. So friends, today uh, we're, we're still in 1 Samuel chapter 16. And now we are looking at verses 11 and 12 where... Um, all of Jesse's sons, all of his other sons have been essentially presented to Samuel and the Lord has rejected all of them as the next king, um, to lead Israel. And Samuel is like, okay, you know, the Lord told me to get up and take my horn of oil and come here. Cause this is where the next king is. He's already, you know, this is where I'm going to find him so that I can anoint him, uh, uh, is this everybody? (laughs) Because he's gone through all of Jesse's sons. The Lord told Samuel that it was going to be a son of Jesse. And here, all of the sons have been presented. And so I'm sure Samuel was probably like, um, yeah, so is that everyone? And he even says, are these all the sons you have? Like, hello, hello. Uh, I know I'm, I know I'm hearing correctly from the Lord. He just told me, you know, like he's just rejected everyone as they've come up. Where is the, where is the one, right? Where is the one to be anointed? Are these all the sons you have? And what does Jesse say? There is still the youngest, but he is tending the sheep. Friends, there is significance in this. And I could probably talk for a really long time and really get into all of the nuances in these two verses, but I'm not, I'm going to try to keep it uh, deep, but not super, super deep, right? I don't want to take your whole day on this. There is significance here in that when Samuel, <clears throat> excuse me, when Samuel said to Jesse, Bring me all of your sons. David wasn't originally considered. Now, David definitely is the son of Jesse, right? He's the youngest. He's out tending the sheep. To me, this says that either because of his age, and and I have a I have a tendency to feel like that was probably the driving factor was his age, that he was the youngest, um, because we're told that he was good looking, right? It says he was ready with a fine appearance and handsome features. And this is the NIV in both the Amplified and, oh my goodness, I think, um, sorry, I can't think of the other version that I read this in, but both of those translations specifically say that David had beautiful eyes. It specifically talks about his eyes, his beautiful eyes. And, and so we know from 
the text that David was a very handsome individual, right? He's a he's younger in this um, when he shows up on the scene here, I'm not exactly sure how old he is. I mean, he has to be of some age because he's out tending sheep. So I'm sure, you know, this is not a five-year-old we're talking about, but not yet considered to be a man, right? Not yet considered to be um, in the same standing as the rest of his brothers. So the fact that David who, if we go down the lineage, right, if we go through the years, fast forward, we know that Jesus is of the line of David. And just think about that for just a minute. When Samuel came to anoint the next king, David initially was not even considered. David wasn't even thought of. As Jesse is parading all of his sons in front of Samuel so that one of them can be chosen to be the next king, he did not even consider his youngest son, David. Friends, there's a message in that. There is a message in that for all of us who have ever been discounted, who have ever been um, forgotten, not thought of, not considered, you know, n- no expectations, right? Not even low expectations, no expectations put on us to do anything, to accomplish anything of value. Friends, do not let, mm, do not Let what people, what man as a whole, what human beings do not let their thoughts, their opinions, their or lack thereof for you determine what you believe God is capable of producing in and through you. Friends, David was looked at as the shepherd boy. I said that in yesterday's episode. You know, David, David was just the shepherd boy. He was out tending the sheep. He was out watching over the flock. Notice that we're not told what the other sons were doing, right? They obviously were all somewhere close by. You know, because it doesn't tell us that there was a lot of difficulty in getting all of Jesse's other sons to show up. I think that there were seven of them, maybe. Um, so we are, we're not told that there's difficulty getting the rest of them to show up. But they left David out in the field, tending the sheep. Because, whatever, David's just a little shepherd boy. And if you read further... Um, in 1 Samuel, as you get into more of David's story and the interaction, um, you know, with Saul and how it comes about to, how David comes about to slay Goliath and all of these things, friends, David, (laughs) there's a, an exchange a little bit further in 1 Samuel between David and one of his brothers. And essentially the older brother is like, why are you here? And why are you speaking? I mean, like, seriously, like, why are you even opening up your mouth? Why are you existing here? And David is like, what did I say now? Like, what did I do? Friends, that gives us, that gives us insight into what this relationship looked like. That gives us insight into how David was viewed by some others. And very often, friends, you know this, very often it can be our own family members who heap the most amount of doubt upon us. They can be our biggest supporters, but they can also be our biggest doubters. And that absolutely was the case for David. His brother couldn't understand why this little twerp is here, you know, Uh, why are you even here? Friends, please let that be a piece of encouragement. 
to not allow what others think or say to deter you from walking down the path that God is laying out for you. All right, let's come back to our scripture for today because that I feel like there's a whole different soapbox that I can very easily stand upon and and give a whole nother message on, but that's not for today. So <laughs> we'll put that in the plans for another day. But friends, as we're looking here at today's scripture, Samuel says to Jesse, send him in, send for him. Bring me, bring me the boy, basically, right? Send in for this youngest son who's out tending the sheep. We will not sit down until he arrives. Samuel was purposefully including David in the meal. They were going to sit down to eat, right, and have a meal because that was custom, customary of the time. Samuel is not allowing, every, he's, oh my, ugh. He's holding up progress waiting on the, uh, the chosen one in this particular instance to arrive. So Jesse sends for him, has him brought in. And scripture tells us that he was ready with a fine appearance and handsome features. And I'm kind of curious as to why, why David's appearance why is it necessary for us to know that he was, you know, ready means kind of red faced a little bit. It makes me think of, um, it makes me think of someone who in this particular instance, we're talking about David. So we're talking about a male, but we're, it makes me think of someone who has been working hard, right? Who's been out in the field working, you know, who's been uh, someone who works with their hands and, and gets in there and does stuff, right? He had a fine appearance. Again, other translations specifically state that he had beautiful eyes and handsome features. I am so curious as to why why the Lord felt it was important to include these details about David. Perhaps, I don't know. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. And, and I'm not feeling anything in particular um, about what the response for that would be. But it is interesting to me as to why this thing was brought in here. Why this description was put in here. Now, granted, uh, they do describe um, his oldest brother, and you know they talk about his height and his stature. So, you know, I mean, descriptions are not you know not unheard of certainly in scripture. But I'm I'm very very fascinated with why some of the uh, translations specifically talk about his beautiful eyes, and I don't know why that is stuck with me. Um, but for some reason it is. So I'll have to pray a little bit more about that and see what exactly it is that I need to get from that. Um, you know, the eyes are often talked about as the window to the soul. So I don't know, maybe there was, maybe there was something in his appearance. I don't know, because it, it's not Samuel who makes this decision, right? Samuel, Samuel is nothing more than God's appointed, God's anointed to, to, be the instrument, right? Again, my visual brain is like Samuel is just simply the the pass through. He is the instrument that God is using. And then we see here, then the Lord said, rise and anoint him. He is the one. God chose David. And we need to be clear about that because sometimes we get mixed up and we think that the instrument, the one who is being used by God to point or show that that is the person who the power comes from, if you will. Um, but in truth, it is the Lord who makes that choice. God chose David. He just told Samuel to rise and anoint him, for he is the one. And David has such, a, a, such an interesting and fascinating and dramatic story. 
read about David. Um, David is David is absolutely a well-known, um, I hate to use the word character, uh, because character to me makes me think of like make-believe um, personality. David is such a, he is so many dimensions, right? And, and you think about all of the things that he went through, and then you think about the things that he did, and then you realize how many of the Psalms were written by David, and how much is devoted to talking about David and what he went through in his experiences. And you may wonder why, you know, David was an adulterer, right? David committed adultery and then had Bathsheba's husband killed. <laughs> I mean, come on. But given when asked why 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 david he's hello why david because david was a man after god's own heart and friends there's so much that we can learn because even when david was frustrated i love the psalms so much the ones that were written by david because David does not, he doesn't hold back his emotions and his frustrations and his, you know, his desires. He gives all of it to God. He expresses all of it to God. But there is an underlying thread through all of that. And it is, you know, God, I'm laying all of this down at your feet, but I know that you, you are the one, your will be done. You are the one that I lean on. You are my rock. You are my salvation. You are my my stronghold. You are my refuge. So friends, now we we know that God knows so much more than us. (laughs) Oh, that's like the understatement of all eternity, right? (laughs) God knew. That yes, David would have difficulties. Yes, David would mess up. David is, was, David was a human being, just like the rest of us. But David never stopped chasing after God's heart. He never stopped desiring to do God's will. Even in his moments of weakness, even in his trials and tribulations, It may have taken him a minute, but he came back to it and realized, Lord, I need, I need forgiveness. I've sinned against you. I'm sorry. Repent, forgive, right? So friends, please do not allow anyone other than the Lord himself to speak into your life and tell you what your value and your worth is. He is the one who who chooses, who appoints, who anoints, who decides, who calls. My friends, that's the only that's the only that's the only confirmation you need is the one that comes from God. So when they count you out, <laughs> when they don't pay attention to you, when they don't even realize that you're there, <laughs> just remember that um, God is the one, and He delights in uh, He delights in you, and He delights in all that you bring to the table, regardless of who or if anyone else sees it. So. Friends, with that, we're going to close up and I'm going to say thank you so much for being here with me today and just tell you once again what a blessing and a joy it is to be on this walk with you. And I ask that you share share with me, um, join me in giving God all the glory and the honor for allowing us to be together, to have this time and to get what we get from this time together. So friends, thank you so much for joining me today. Come back and join me for our next episode and some real talk about vision, perception, and reality in Revelation chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. Until then! Hey friend, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. It's my pleasure as always to be here with you. 
If what you listened to today resonated with you, if you enjoyed listening to the show, do me a favor, go ahead and like and subscribe to this podcast and leave a review. Those reviews are so helpful. I can't even tell you how much I appreciate each and every single one of them. And go ahead and share this episode out with a friend. Invite them along for a walk through the word and let's enjoy that daily bread together. See you tomorrow.